Hey yo, welcome everyone to episode 19 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave. And this week I want to give a shout out to Wonderville Arcade in Brooklyn, New York. It's basically an adult playground for indie arcade games. Um, and speaking on that, they actually have almost all the indie games that are in there. All of the games that are in there are indie. But a lot of the games that are in there were made by these guys that we're talking today. And that is Death by Audio Arcade. Um, We've got Mark Klieb, Chris Hernandez, Andy Wallace, and Dustin Long with us today. How are you guys doing? Not too bad. Yeah, doing good. Pretty good, considering the circumstances of everything that's going on. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I know that a couple of you are at Wonderville right now, and then we've got one at home. Um, So we'll just rapid fire these questions off and kind of get to know you guys. So first off, I want to start off with introductions. Who are you and what do you do in the scene? Uh, All right. So I'm Mark Klieb. I'm one of the co-owners of Wonderville and the founder of Death by Audio Arcade. Um, I'm sort of the fabricator and uh, builder of the cab. So I've been finding people that make games and we construct cabinets for them. I'm Chris Hernandez. Uh, I am kind of the artist and graphic designer for the group. Uh, I do a lot of the signs, logos, uh, when we need things printed or designed for web stuff, uh, I kind of handle that stuff um, and sort of try to act as a go between between game artists and like graphic design kind of needs. Uh, I'm Dustin Long. Uh, I'm a game designer and developer, uh, part of Death Bay Audio Arcade. Um, I have done a lot of behind the scenes stuff, miscellaneous tasks, and was doing a lot of uh, event stuff back when live events existed, and hope to do some more. And uh, I'm Andy Wallace. I am the vice president of Death by Audio Arcade. Uh, I'm primarily a developer, um, but I have some fabrication experience as well. And uh, yeah, just a lot of like making games as well as running a lot of events and things that we do. Awesome. So now that we know kind of what you guys do and obviously all being involved with Death by Audio Arcade, I want to know how you guys got started and how everyone got involved. Okay, so this is Mark. I was living in the back of a venue called Death by Audio. It was a warehouse in Brooklyn. Uh, And in 2000, I guess, 13, I put a call out on the NYU Game Center list And I asked if anybody had an indie game they wanted to turn into an arcade cabinet. And uh, one of the responses was from Studio Mercado, who built a game called Crystal Brawl. Uh, And Chris uh, was part of that team. And we basically built an arcade cabinet in the back of Death by Audio, uh, which was also like a 13-person living space. So it was like this music venue, art space, uh, live, live, work kind of thing. So we built the arcade cabinet and we put it in the venue and we had a party to kind of kick off uh, the Crystal Brawl cabinet. And we showed Andy's game, Particle Mace, uh, just on a screen. And then Andy came up to me and he's like, hey, I also would like an arcade cabinet. And I was like, sure, let's do it. For, for what it's worth, Mark, I think you came up to me because I remember like going home that night and being like, holy shit, holy shit, someone just said they want to build an arcade cabinet for my game. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was a very good game. Um, so yeah, we, we ended up building Particle Mace. Like We built about five cabinets at Death by Audio, and at one of those shows I met Dustin. And um, Yeah, I think I walked up to you and said, hey, I have a game also. Uh, this stuff is cool. Yeah, so we ended up um, collaborating on this festival low level uh, that Dustin had organized, and it was like a chiptune arcade like party um, that was really cool. And then um, after that, we built a cabinet for Dustin's game Star Versus, um, and then we all just kept building cabinets and having events for them. Yeah, to uh, to step back a little bit, I was a uh, as a founding member of Studio Mercado. Um, which was basically a a group of guys that knew each other from game jams. Uh, And there was a place called Cafe Mercado in the West Village that was open 24-7 and had coffee and free seating. Um, And yeah, we basically holed up there in the middle of winter for like a global game jam or something and started waking stuff. Um, 
yeah, we started making Crystal Brawl in like 2012, 2013, maybe. Um, and yeah, like the, the whole idea of like making an arcade cabinet for us was like, oh, maybe this is a way to promote the game or something, like get a publisher or something like that. Uh, and ended up instead doing things like the Deathmatch by Audio and Magfest. And once other people started building cabinets, it kind of, um, it kind of became an arcade and not just about any one game. It got out of control. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I feel like back at the start, it was, uh, I mean, it's still really special, but I know for me as a developer uh, for that first Deathmatch by Audio, I think Ben from Studio Mercado, uh, who liked Particle Mace, was like, oh, you should totally show this thing. Uh, and it was wild for me going to Death by Audio, which is a venue, I think I'd actually seen like one show there in the past. But like suddenly see it with the lights on and people helping me set up and that kind of thing. And just this like amazing art space that was, you know, totally DIY. It was a little outside my own like field of reference at that point. Uh, and just being like really blown away by how cool it was uh, and how cool it was to be like making a thing that people were enjoying in that space as well. Uh, it's really intoxicating. From, from the outside, I remember feeling like it was very intimidating there because it was the sort of legendary punk venue and being you know someone making their goofy little indie game showing yourself there <laughs> felt like I, I don't know like I, I was like it's cool that you guys allow me to hang out here <laughs> <laughs> that's a really cool origin story the way that you guys kind of all met up and it ended up like not even being about games at all it was more about music and then it just turned into well why don't we just have a game here why not kind of thing and I remember somebody mentioned the idea of like maybe putting it in a cabinet as a way to promote the game, right? It's it's a different way that people were used to seeing games back in the day, and now they don't really see any new arcade games. So along that line, I'm curious as to what games you guys were involved with individually, um, so we kind of know what you've done as developers. I just make cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I can go. I've been I've been making games for a long time, uh, and I made a lot of you know mostly smaller indie games. Uh, I worked at a small game studio actually about the time that the first Deathmatch by Audio was happening, but I was also putting games out on my own. But you know, pretty much smaller things, uh, a lot of mobile titles, that kind of stuff, uh, and that's honestly still what I make is mostly smaller, kind of more experimental games. Um, so that was the kind of thing I was making both before and after we started Death by Audio Arcade. Uh, I kind of, uh, have game development more as like a hobby. It's not like my day job, uh, personally. Um, but a lot of the games that I've made have been, uh, focused on retro tech or old technology. So like, uh, I made a bunch of NES games, uh, one of which was a cabinet star versus, um, but a few others just as kind of like, uh, a unique take on what indie games can be. Yeah. Uh, I did a... I got started with like a Xbox Live indie game, if anyone remembers that platform. Uh, called like Brad Reagan, which was a sort of Mega Man Game Boy throwback. Um, but Crystal Brawl was the first thing I worked on, and really that was that was the main thing I've done for DBA. Um, the other stuff I do, I, I work with Dustin and Andy on lots of side projects and like other sort of experimental kind of stuff that they're working on too. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to get something else into the arcade again soon. Um, but yeah, mostly I do like sort of supporting work on other people's games too. I mean, in addition to cabinets, like Dustin and I and Andy, we all worked on the uh, Place Very Strangers pinball machine, which has a lot of moving parts. Uh, and we have a, a GIF photo booth that we all kind of right. put some work into. So there's like other projects that we work on that aren't just cabinets that are like game related we should also mention there's a lot of people that are part of death by audio arcade it's not just the four of us um it's i mean it's 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 a you know it's a relatively sizable community that has uh you know some people work together more often than others uh but there's definitely a lot of um cool folk that we've all just like met and worked with uh, in various capacities that's cool to hear that it's like a, a big collective and i know just looking at the catalog from Wonderville, you guys have so many different games in there that are from a whole bunch of different New York developers, which I think is really cool to help build the community and the scene out there. I want to know what are some of the cabinets that you guys are known for? Uh, what have you guys built um, out there in New York? Uh, 
So we can go. We can go chronologically. I feel like that might. Do you be... want to talk about all of them? Are you going to list every cabinet? Yeah. Go. I mean, go ahead. Why not? I mean, I, I, I'm going to say I think Particle Mace has definitely gotten a lot of attention because it's been at a lot of venues. Uh, it's been in a lot of photographs. Like a lot of bands mm-hmm. are playing at old venues that don't exist anymore, and there's like Particle Mace sitting in the background. Uh, it's been beat up in legendary fashions. Uh, <laughs> Broken, uh, broken in all sorts of interesting ways. People moshed into it and stuff. Yeah. I, I before, feel like one of my... Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, before Silent Barn got shut down... Uh, well, Andy, this might be your story to tell, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it was at a venue called Silent Barn, which also tragically closed. And I think one of my most like satisfying moments as a developer is, A, that I heard some bands were coming on late because like their drummer was playing Particle Mace, which rules. But also... Uh, a band, I, Naco, wrote a song called Particle Mace that was the single off their album, and I was like, that's a funny coincidence. And it was not a coincidence. It was about this game that they really liked from playing it at Silent Barn. Uh, and that, yeah, that was a pretty magical experience. I, w- I was going to point out that the mailman also was like a huge fan of it. Like, stop on their route for a while and play a couple rounds of Particle Mace at Silent Barn every day. Yeah, yeah, Particle Mace did all right at Silent Barn. <laughs> it's also probably the game that we've like re- like replaced parts the most of like when it came to wonderville we gave it a pretty big makeover um so it's one of the oldest cabinets but it's also maybe got the most frankenstein parts just because it's been so it's been through a lot yeah. yeah but it's it's definitely not the only uh cabinet in our collection not the only cabinet in our collection that like got a real following um i feel like the senten table recently has been like really exciting um so that is a game uh, that has was it a hundred buttons? Hundred buttons, <laughs> button soldering. <laughs> Way more than any fighting game I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a project by Amanda Hudgens, and we'd been playing it at Magfest for the last few years. And um, yeah, it, it just made sense as a cabinet. Like we really wanted to build uh, a cabinet for it because it was like a hundred buttons wide. Ma- makes sense in kind of heavy air quotes there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kung Fu Kickball is also a really heavy favorite at Wonderville um, by Jonah Wallerstein. We built that at MAGFest at a panel, which I had been pitching this idea for years, and everyone kept saying, stop it, you're crazy. We're not building a cabinet at MAGFest. Um, and we, we kind of built it beforehand, and then we just assembled it like Ikea furniture, which you, worked. You don't, you don't have to reveal that part. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a 2v2 uh, kickball game and uh people get really into it i think speaking of magfest you've also got to shout out uh nothing good can come of this mm-hmm. by mm. mike Rizzoli. yes uh that's a game that we we run tournaments at magfest and usually it's you know like a little 16 person bracket kind of thing um this past year when we did nothing good which is a 2v2 kind of uh a, a gun and a bullet in a room basically uh, by play. by michael consoli yes uh but that game has had, I think, the tournament bracket. We got a 64-player bracket fully filled out this year. Um, that's become a huge draw at MAGFest. Yeah, people lose their goddamn minds playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> Should we explain what MAGFest is? Because we keep mentioning it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, we talked about this uh, briefly, but it's like this huge festival in uh, National Harbor, Maryland. And we've been going for, I want to say, like seven years um, or one cabinet in our collection has been there at least for the past seven years. Yeah. I, I was going there before I met you guys. Uh, I, I fell into it through uh, the chiptune scene in New York because um, that was a big part of it. Well, is a big part of it still. Um, but yeah, I feel like MAGFest also kind of encouraged the growth of our group a lot because it gave us something to kind of like target every year. Uh, mm-hmm. So we like, you know, we always know like, oh, well, what are we going to build? at MAGFest or bring to MAGFest or, you know, we, we got to keep these tabs around because they got to be at MAGFest and people want to see them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The New York bars don't necessarily have space for 12 indie arcade cabinets all the time. So they, a lot of times they get kind of dispersed to like, you know, people's homes or like offices or a couple of venues that can hold a couple of cabinets at a time. But like MAGFest was always like one place where we would get everything together and have like the full arcade as like one like weekend long show for it yeah bring everything out that you can to kind of fill out a booth i mean that's that's a pretty big booth when when you look at the catalog of what you guys have built it's got to be at least 15 or more games yeah so that you guys kind of 
sort of answered my next question, but I wanted to ask it anyways, because I feel like there is still a lot more that you guys have been involved in. And I was wondering what events Death by Audio Arcade has been involved with and like, how have you helped it grow? Um, so, go ahead, Andy. So I feel like um, there's kind of a mix there because there's a lot of events that other people do that we show work at, like MAGFest, like this uh, Smithsonian American Art Museum's Indie Arcade Day, which we've gone to a bunch of times, and like Low Level back in the day. Uh, and then there's also a lot of events that we run ourselves where we invite people to come and make games. Um, so for instance, we did a alt control game jam like two years ago, I guess at this point where Mark and a few people like helped folks put together weird controllers for a game jam. Um, so we both have, yeah, stuff where we're bringing things and then events where we're sort of throwing the party. I think it's also worth pointing out specifically uh, 2018. Uh, we did a different event at a different venue every month uh, for the entirety of the year. Um, I think September was kind of technically didn't have an event, but it was going to. <laughs> um, but a lot of that, that was before Wonderville existed. And a lot of that was getting cabinets into U-Haul trucks and moving them into venues, moving them out. Um, some of them would be just like, you know, um, you know, this, this venue wants to like showcase something. Uh, but some of them were like around specific themes. Um, and that was wild. Cause that was a lot of like collaborating with uh, the different parts of the New York art scene and kind of getting music crowds more interested in arcade stuff, which is, was like, you know, part of our origin story. Um, it was a really interesting, like, like mixing of groups and it, uh, led to a lot of great connections, I think, which was really cool to see. Yeah, in 2018 alone, so I'll just list like several of the the venues. Uh, elsewhere, we were at uh, Dream House, which was this really amazing venue. Um, we collaborated with Super Cheap Gallery, Caveat, um, Flat Tops, Flat Tops, uh, Cloud City, Cloud City. Uh, there's, yeah, Brooklyn Research. We uh, did some stuff with uh, Le Poisson Rouge. Le Poison Rouge, yeah. We debuted the pinball machine there. And was that? I think that's yeah, yeah. yeah, almost everything. Yeah. It was it was a wild year. <laughs> that was that was that was a big motivation for having Wonderville uh, start to exist because it was too hard finding places to put cabinets every single month, every couple of weeks. Yeah, places to park U Haul trucks. <laughs> yes. The the very first show we did at Silent Barn, which is like one of the first events or installs we did, which was only like what, four cabinets or something, but uh, me and Mark were in a U-Haul on Bushwick Avenue in front of Silent Barn, and the U-Haul bumper hooked into the wheel well of a parked car next door, and as Mark pulled away, pulled the front fender off the car and pretty much neutralized any any money we made from the door that show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an envelope of cash to that person the next day. <laughs> That's pretty cool how everything kind of came full circle. Like you said, you guys started around music and then you moved into the arcade scene and then you brought the arcade scene into the music scene so that everything kind of tied back in together. Um, and we've kind of talked about what's going on in the world and how everybody has so much downtime. I mean, now is the best time to... I know here in Minnesota, everybody's redoing their roof from hail damage before the winter happens. And it's it's all home improvement and building this and building that and doing all these things you wanted to do for so many years that you never had the time for, but you really probably did. Um, and especially like with us at Slackers Inc. working on Galactic Battleground, we've transitioned to why not put it on Steam? So we're trying to figure out the best way to do that. I'm curious as to know, I'm curious to know, like, what are you guys working on right now? Well, I feel like there's been some really cool stuff that has happened because of the quarantine. Um, I, I feel like Andy should talk about digiplomacy because that's <laughs> been like a hit yeah. with everyone over multiple social networks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll plug my stuff. Uh, yeah. So I'm working on a game called digiplomacy, which I believe is a working title. Uh, that is kind of a reframing of games like diplomacy and risk, but played in a social network. So everyone's like fighting for territory, but it's played via like a Slack bot or a Discord bot. So you're already like in a Discord with people, but now you're like giving this robot your orders for the turn. And once a day, it resolves the whole turn. And you see like the people say what they were going to do. Did they betray you? All the kind of good stuff you get with diplomacy, except now like with your friends once a day. <laughs> that's, that's cool. I mean, that's a really cool thing to add to Discord. 
um, just to make it a little more creative and a little more fun with all your friends kind of keeps it going over time. Is there anything else you guys are working on right now? Like any new cabinets or any new games? Um, we've been I mean, other than that one. <laughs> we've been uh, working on our very last Kickstarter reward, which is etching the names of backers into the side of an arcade cabinet. And yeah. Chris has been meticulously routing out every letter of every name. <laughs> it's all of our Kickstarter sponsors, the DBA members, and like for those special thanks to friends and family. Um, we're, we retired Crystal Brawl, the oldest game we've got, but we are using the cabinet to become um, like the new like sort of rotating showcase for Wonderville sort of like test games. Um, and what's really cool about that is that that cabinet is actually built with the wood from the old stage from Death by Audio. Um, so it's like, it's the first thing we ever like built as part of DBA Arcade. It's the first cabinet I ever took to MAGFest. It's made out of the literal stage from Death by Audio. And now it's um, sort of having all of the, all of the names of like the backers and supporters and everything um, etched into it to become like a sort of permanent rotating part of like the arcade. Um, which is pretty cool. It's got a lot of positive mojo built into its fabric. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's cool. That's like a past, present, and future of the story of both Wonderville and Death by Audio Arcade, mm -hmm. having components from where you started and then new games you guys are working on, but also the backers that kind of helped you guys get through a tough time. Um, the last question I wanted to ask you guys and this is a pretty loaded question, so feel free to go as in-depth with this as you need to. If you could put any indie game in an arcade cabinet, which game would you pick, why, and how would you design the cabinet? Who's going first? I, I have a tentative answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my first thought was Spelunky, because, like, fun arcade action game, sure. <laughs> but I think my real answer is Thumper. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Um, yeah, Thumper, the, the rhythm violence game. Because uh, the controls are really simple, but it's so immersive. And I think I want a cabinet that, like, preferably is bent metal. But it, like, bends so it kind of envelops you. So you're, like, leaning into sort of, like, an angle going forward to sort of match what's going on in the game. And then you just have, like, a steering wheel or maybe a stick that slides back and forth and, like, two pedal controls. That's what I'm thinking right now. That sounds rad. No, yeah, right? I think it'd be cool. You ever play Stun Runner? Kind of sounds like that. Yes, yeah, something like that, but like 10 times louder. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of the, the cabinet design. It, it feels really physically immersive as well as like the game being really immersive. Totally, yeah. Uh, I have an answer. Uh, there's this old Flash game I got really addicted to called Nanaka Crash, where you're this young guy riding a bike and you actually drive into like someone and you bounce off the bike and you have to see how far you can get. It's one of those like bear hitting the penguin games, but it has all these like superpowers built in. You just said bear yeah. hitting the penguin is not a genre that I'm. No, I know exactly what he's talking about. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> it's totally a genre. It was it was during the Flash era. Anyway, R.I.P. Insanely addicted, and I think it's a two button game, so it would be pretty good for an arcade cab. Um, I don't even know if it exists anymore online, but uh, that's immediately where my mind went to. Um, I've had a couple games that have popped up that I've been thinking about cabinets. The first is uh, Lost Wage Rampage by Jane Friedhoff, uh, Andy's wife. Uh, she has a cabinet, Slime City Oracles, and this game is like a driving game where you just smash into as many things as you can, which I've not built a driving cabinet, and I would love to do that because I think it would be really fun. Um, also Super Sharp Birds by Neil Sverry, which is a one-button-per-player game. And we're thinking about a COVID specific version that uses like a foot pedal instead of an arcade button to play. So you would just like, it's a game where you just step on the pedal to change directions and you're trying to hit your opponent from the back. Jump. To jump and yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a one button game. It's a one button game. Cool. Um, I don't have a good answer for this, but I've sort of fallen in love with Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. I'm not entirely sure how you make an arcade game out of that, but I feel like there's a way to do it uh, because that game's sort of like a bunch of absurd armies running at each other and having like just goofy interactions that you sort of set up. And I feel like there could be a cool arcade version of that where you sort of 
set things up under a time limit and hit a button and then like laugh at the chaos that happens. I feel like that's a really good setup for an arcade game. I mean, they all sound like awesome games and really fun cabinets to design and you guys would be the guys to do it. So um, if you need to reach out to anybody to allow them to let you build that, then you should do that while you have the time. Um, but I want to wrap everything up here. And right before we go, I want you guys to shout out any social medias that you want to uh, send some people to, whether it be uh, Death by Audio Arcade, Wonderville, or a project that you're working on on your own. Uh, if you're interested in chatting with us, uh, deathbyaudioarcade.slack.com is our Slack that uh, you can hang out at, say hi. Um, we have social media at DBA Arcade, but it's been a little quiet since COVID has uh, made it hard to have physical gaming events. We've also got the Discord, which is like Slack we use to organize a lot of projects. Discord is like very good for just sort of hanging out and meeting people. Yeah, yeah the, the, one, the Discord is yeah. a lot of the same people. Oh, right. That's right. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's at wonderville.nyc slash Discord. But join both. Come yeah. to both. There's a lot of overlap. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on again. Mark, Chris, Andy, and Dustin. It was great chatting with you guys. Um, if you guys like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, definitely hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another episode. We upload every Friday. Um, different developers, different arcade owners, uh, people in the music scene, and or just in the gaming scene as well. So until next week, peace.